Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me again for another, well hopefully fun and interesting video because I get asked so often about all the gear and kit and just everything I'm using like supplements, food, watches, trainers, so much stuff. So I thought let's make a mega video for you guys to follow along to and yeah show you everything I'm using on a pretty much a daily basis. So down below, um, I'll link it down in the description and on the YouTube, uh, if you just hover your mouse over, you'll see these different sections. So I'll call these different sections everything we start. The first thing will be trainers or sneakers or shoes, shoes whatever you want to call them. Um, and then you can go through and just have a look at the section that particularly you want to have a look at. And yeah, just for, because um, we've got to say these sort of things, nothing here is sponsored. And as always, let me know down in the comments about your favorite things. I'm always looking to get some new gear in to test and yeah want to hear all about what the stuff you're out there using what are your favorites what are your favorite shoes at the moment what's your favorite watch um, and all of that sort of stuff so yeah let me know down in the comments as we go through the video if you're new around here please hit that subscribe button we've got loads of great content Right guys, let's start with the shoes, trainers, sneakers, if you're across the pond there in Canada and America. Um, yeah, this is the fun stuff. This is what we like to spend our money on as runners, as many shoes as we can afford. So starting out with the very sort of fastest thing, if I'm at the moment, if I'm doing something like a time trial, if I was doing races, then I would be using the Nike Next Percent. Fantastic shoe, just super, super quick. I haven't got any of the Alpha Flies in yet. Probably just gonna skip that one and a new issue will come out later in the year. For sessions and some slightly sort of faster up-tempo threshold sort of work, it's still gonna be the Nike Pegasus Turbo 2. Um, I would like some ones, but they can't find them anywhere. So yeah, is my go-to fast shoe, just fantastic bit of kit. So moving on to like recovery and easy sort of runs, my favorite shoe at the moment, the New Balance 1080 version 10, just such a beautiful, comfortable shoe. So soft, but also really quite responsive, way more responsive than you would think with something like this. Super comfortable, I just don't have anything bad to say about the shoe, just love taking every single step of it. Really highly recommended. If you want one trainer that can really do everything for you that's going to be the one to go for also my little sort of surprise of the year so far of 2020 it has some positives the asics nova blast really really surprised again nice and soft not quite as cushioned as the as the new balance but but still really nice and soft and super responsive as well nike pegasus 37 I really haven't enjoyed this shoe to be honest. So it's not gonna be in the rotation that much longer. Just found it a little bit dead, just no real sort of feedback off the road and equally they're not that cushioned. Um, yeah, just not very responsive at all. So I am gonna be testing that out. The full review will be coming soon, but not really enjoying that that much, but it is in the rotation at the moment. And then for some super, really easy runs, the New Balance more, just super, super cushioned, not very responsive, but sometimes when out in a recovery run or second run of the day for me, that's just really nice to grab that one. Then moving on to the trails, the Nike Trail 2, as you saw in the last review, really enjoying the shoe. Yes, it is very heavy, but for the longer stuff, building up to the Thames Path 100 miler at the moment, that's gonna be the shoe I'm reaching for. And then, yeah, my favorite, maybe my favorite trail shoe of all time, the Nike Pegasus 36 Trail. Not a bad thing to say about that. Such a fantastic shoe for pretty much any trail you're doing, unless it's really wet and really muddy, then um, yeah, you're gonna need something with some slightly deeper lugs. But for a lot of people, that rotor trail, that's gonna keep you covered. Right, that is the trainer rotation at the moment. Let's move on. Right guys, moving on to headphones, keeping ourselves entertained with all those podcasts and music when out on the run. So for me, the majority of running, I use the Aftershocks Trex Air. They have got a newer version than this now, they're called Aeroplex or something. Um, but yeah, Bluetooth, really, really good. You can hear everything going on around you. And yeah, for spoken word podcasts, they work absolutely fine. If you want great music quality, it's not really what you want to go for uh, because yeah, everything else kind of interferes. But for the for everything I do, I feel like these absolutely fine and super safe, and you can wear them in pretty much any race, um, even the races that ban headphones. So really, really enjoy using those. If I'm doing sessions or I just want to block out everything, and I'm not really running around cars, then I've got some Beats, uh, 
Pro, I can't remember what these things are called. I'll link them down below. Uh, the Beats uh, headphones, they're basically exactly the same as Apple AirPods, uh, but they've got the uh, top bits, they say stuck in your ear. I would use AirPods, but they'll just fall out of my, I have those ears where headphones just fall straight out. So yeah, for me, they just sync up with my iPhone, super easy, sound quality is amazing um, but yeah quite expensive when i first started running i just bought the cheapest pair off amazon for about 10 pounds and they're absolutely fine and again i'll link that cheap pair down below Right, moving on to watches, GPS watches. So for me, I use the Garmin 945. I had the 935 uh, before this, uh, and then Garmin kindly sent me this one for free so I can use it with my training. But as I say, there's not sponsor or anything. They don't ask me to do anything uh, to promote it or anything. They just send it so I can use it. But anyway, um, yeah, fantastic watch. The reason I have the 945 over something like the 245 is just because of the color maps. Um, and the battery lasts absolutely ages. So yeah, really, really good um, to have that super long battery life in ultras. But really for the vast majority of people, the, the nine, the two, four, five is absolutely fine. And if, yeah, if you uh, don't run too much, running is really not big, your, your sort of main thing, then the Garmin 45, really good place to start out. If for whatever reason you're crazy and you don't want to use a Garmin, then we usually say, have a look at the Chorus watches out there as well. Now for me, I then, um, would usually pair that with the Garmin um, HRM Run because you get all the Garmin running dynamics, which is really good. Um, I just don't find these heart rate monitors straps that comfortable. I just find them a bit annoying. So what I do is I pair my Garmin with a Polar OH1, which is like an optical heart rate monitor, and then I use the Garmin FootPod as well. Um, so I get all my running dynamics off the foot pod and then all the heart rate data off, off the Polar OH1. The, this I find to be, if, if this is 100% accurate, I find this to be about 99% accurate. Um, and that is good enough for me. Um, it, yeah, it works absolutely fine. Just goes on my arm, which you might see in some videos. Um, when I'm on my Watt bike, just to put this in now, I'm not sure else to put it in, uh, you just use the Wahoo ticker because that's a Bluetooth one. So if you just use your phone, and you want a Bluetooth heart rate monitor, then we recommend the Wahoo Ticker. Right guys, so today's question of the day is what is your favorite bit of running gear that you own? Yeah, let me know down in the comments. And I say, maybe get it in, get a review, and love to hear about, yeah, your favorite thing that you have in your running collection. Right, moving on to recovery gadgets. Now, there's so much you can do to aid our recovery. Some basic things like just putting our legs up the wall, uh, making sure we do some, like a proper cool down. At the end of the run and having some good nutrition when we get in but then you've got lots of gadgets as well that can really help aid that recovery and I've got quite a lot of them here to get through um, so yeah something that I bought really quite expensive you may have heard of a company called Novatech they make these big boots uh, that go over your legs now I'd love to be able to afford something like that it's way out my price bracket in the UK you're talking about 17 1800 pounds in the US without all the import charges they're actually not too bad about a thousand dollars but getting them over here really expensive so anyway I bought this thing called an air relax very very similar it's kind of a bit of a carbon copy of what the Novatech is without it hasn't got all of like the tech and gizmos with the apps and stuff but yeah basically put these uh big uh <laughs> things on your legs. I'll put a better video of me using it. Um, and then it, yeah, basically get, fills these pockets with air and just kind of massages your legs after a long, hard session. It cost me about 500 pounds. Is that worth it? It depends how much you're gonna use it, but it's super easy to use. And a lot of these things, it just, you're gonna use, they're only good if you're actually gonna use them. If they're just gonna sit in a cupboard and you're never gonna use them, they're no use to anybody. But this, you can just put on, it feels really nice, you can just relax in your bed and pretty much drift off and just let it get on with it. Moving on, Theragun. Now, massage guns, yeah, they make, they're very noisy. This is the Theragun. Again, this is a little bit more expensive. There are so many companies out there. I Probably the most, the product that most people get in touch and try and sell, sell me free versions to review. You can't really get much better than this in my eyes. Yes, it's expensive. But, the, and the, there are obviously some cheaper ones out in the market there. Are they good? Yeah, they're good. As long as you actually use them, keep it charged and have a go after a run. I would say just don't use it like too much. You can get really quite aggressive and just really go to town and probably cause yourself a bit more damage than, than good. But yeah, does it make a difference? Yes, it's not, none of these things are miracle workers. They can't, uh, it's not get out of jail free cards. But yeah, it's nice, it's easy to use and the battery lasts a really long time. So yeah, Theragun, yeah, I recommend it if you're going to use it. 
Um, On to some more manual things, the good old roll recovery R8, really good for getting in and massaging your muscles. Super easy to travel with this because it's not too heavy, just chuck it in your bag. Wherever we go in the world, you just after a run, just give yourself a nice uh, massage with that. Um, yeah, really recommended. Um, then I've got this, the similar version from Roll Recovery, the R3, and I just use this to kind of, you can't cure plantar fasciitis with this, but it's really good to roll underneath your feet with this. Um, yeah, it's feel nice and relaxing, and it will just hopefully keep that sort of plantar fasciitis away. So yeah, really nice to roll the underside of your feet. I've got another version there, um, which is a little bit cheaper. I'll link to both of these. Anyway, down in the notes, um, spiky ball. There's so much stuff you can do with a spiky ball. Um, yeah, really good to have that in your armor. And then the final sort of thing, the tiger tail. It's just a standard roller. Again, easy, you can just chuck in my bag wherever I'm going abroad. And yeah, really nice. It's kind of the best of this type of roller that you can use. So yeah, really recommend it. And then finally, a couple other things. Oh, just one other thing was this air cast thing that you might have seen me use as part of my recovery. You basically fill this full of ice and water, leave it for a few minutes, you get super cold, and then you kind of stick it up above your head and that icy water flows in to this, what they call like a cuff that you then attach around the injured part of your body. So I've got this, this is the ankle sort of foot version, and then it keeps it really icy cold and it's usually that compression and ice to help um, if you've got a bit of a nasty injury and I've got one for my elbow and one for my knee as well so yeah that's made by a company American company called Aircast yeah really really good right let's move on to Chloe well firstly welcome to the bedroom uh, stack of books we'll come on to books very shortly on the bedside table but yeah first things first clothes so let's start with shorts people always ask me where did I get these Nike shorts from so yeah these are only issued to pro athletes basically I'm not a pro athlete but so yeah I've, I've got a few connections like track and field clothes on Instagram and eBay just search around and you can sometimes find people selling these yeah not available to the public but what is very similar is these new Nike shorts that have come out so yeah I just got these on the Nike website really nice short short they've got like a decent lining as well so you don't need to wear sort of underwear with those if you want so yeah these are really good I'll link to these down below for races uh, for marathon races marathon races Road running races then I've got my Solomon shorts um, yeah because then I can put gels inside this sort of pouch at the front and also the pouch at the back so I can usually get about four or five Morton gels in there um, yeah so for marathon distances longer stuff then they're the shorts I use really really good and then moving on to underwear so underwear is where I got all of my underwear from just sort of the standard briefs yeah the, you know they're not the cheapest thing in the world about 10 or 12 pounds for a pair but they last a very very long time and yeah for me super comfortable wear those pretty much day in day out uh singlets and things well of course i'm going to say the ben parks getting it done singlets we just have the standard um singlet here this is you know we bought these and i was just like blown away by how good they are yeah of course we tested out lots of different things we knew they were going to be quite good even spilt my dinner down this one so there you go never take the things off and then we've got the pro singlet which has got all these like laser cut holes through so you can get really sort of breathable it's really nice cut to the back as well both available on the website the pro is out of stock at the moment but we'll have new stock coming in very shortly so yeah fantastic singlets jackets i have the, the my blue salomon jacket this is just like a windproof jacket if it goes anywhere near water it's absolutely hopeless but you know in a sort of windy cold sort of day it scrunches down to super like super super tiny just like that um, and i can chuck that in my pack or whatever just such a versatile jacket really happy with that i don't know if you can buy this anymore but there'll be a current model i'll link that down below but yeah the salomon s lab jacket and then i just have the equivalent waterproof version so this is made by um solomon with a lot of gore-tex uh, material in here as well i've only just bought this one this is actually quite new replacing my other one but i like these salomon jackets because you can put them around your waist 
and then sort of roll them up or roll them down as you're going sort of through the mountains or whatever. So if you get a bit hot, you can just roll it down and tuck it into itself and it stays around your waist, which is just a really cool one. I've never seen that with any other type of jackets and it just kind of works really well. And then if you go up a mountain and get really cold again or whatever, you can just unravel it and put it back over and you can put it over your pack or take it over your pack. It just works really, really well and super waterproof. Yeah, that is mega money. These are about 300 pounds. Um, if you don't want to spend that kind of much, then look at the Bonatti or the Bonatti Pro from Salomon um, jackets I've had before and I've worked, yeah, really, really well. In terms of socks, all of my socks are from Stance. Um, again, a little bit more of the pricier end, but they last absolutely freaking ages. Um, and yeah, they sometimes have some offers. I just get them on the Stance website. I have about, <laughs> about 30 different pairs of Stance socks um, and a massive pile right behind me waiting to go in the wash. So yeah, every single pair of socks I've got for pleasure or running, whatever, it just comes from Stance. Never had any blisters, just no issues whatsoever. It's really weird because they don't look like they're gonna be very good, <laughs> but they just work for me fantastically well. Um, gloves, with well, the pink gloves, my famous pink gloves, not really using at the moment in the middle of summer. They're from Ron Hill. Yeah, I should probably make a Ben Parks version of these. <laughs> I haven't really got around to that yet. Um, so they're good. I wear those. My, I just have really sort of poor circulation, whatever. So that's why I wear gloves quite a lot. And if it gets really cold, then I've got the Montaigne Prism gloves. Um, yeah, super great. Not, not waterproof at all, but in the cold, they're really fantastic. In terms of carrying kit, well, my... I don't go on any single run any, ever without my naked band. So that just goes, put that around me. I can stick my phone in there. I can stick some nutrition. I can stick a water bottle, stick a jacket, so much stuff in there. Put car keys in there. They've got a, like a special sort of clip here. I can put the car keys on so they're not gonna fall out. In the UK, it's quite hard to find. Centurion running website, place to go to see if they've got some stock. And I can put poles in the back of that as well uh, when we're going up in the mountains and things. So just one of the cleverest bits of kit I've ever bought buffs and things or people are using these as face masks now obviously we've just got the Ben Parks uh, trails blue and track red buffs um, yeah really really good they're on the website you can buy the deal two for 20 pounds so not too bad um, woolly hat again Ben Parks woolly hat it's a great piece of kit really really good um, what other people ask me where do I get Strava kit from well Strava send it to me it's not the kind of stuff you can buy unfortunately um, but yeah some really nice gear that Strava send through um, my running company Ballarat uh, Nike Aero Swift top these Nike Aero Swift tops are really nice um, again with all the holes in them you, you see all the pros running in these so if you want to try and find something that sort of cut and shape just type in Nike Aero Swift vest um, and yeah, hopefully something will come up. But a lot of the running I do, if I want to wear a t-shirt, they're just free freebies that I've got from races. I wear this one all the time for the Marathon Mont Blanc. Yeah, I just reuse race t-shirts all the time um, to do my running and training and live my daily life in them. Finally, um, in the winter, so when it gets cold, I've just got some Ron Hill leggings. Traxter leggings are about 10 pounds, super cheap, but they just work and keep me warm. And then if I want to, whatever reason, if you're someone that suffers with some chafing in your legs and that sort of thing, then I've just got these out of Decathlon. They're about five pounds and they work absolutely fine. Don't ride up at all. Just basic kind of, I suppose some people call them cycling shorts, but I wear those with the Ron Hills uh, because they can like chafe the inside of my legs a little bit at times. Um, yeah, or use some body glide, but we'll come on to all of those bits and pieces. Right, that is clothing done. All right guys, moving on to some more trail specific stuff. So my pack is from Solomon, the ADV 12 set. Um, yeah, just a fantastic bit of kit. This is last year's model if you can't find one that looks exactly like this. They have, yeah, updated it for 2020. I haven't used that one yet, but yeah, this is our current go-to pack. 12 liters of space, get so much stuff in here and more than enough to last for pretty much everybody when out on the trails use this races 100 miles um, and longer so yeah really good uh, flasks i don't tend to use the solomon flasks that come with it but the same company that make them as ali hydropack make these much better flasks um, with a wide neck as well and they don't have the really sharp pointy bit at the bottom i know i just prefer those they work better for me so we pair those up um, poles carbon z uh trekking poles um super handy they fold up uh, and really, really lightweight as well. And I can put those in my naked band or just in the back of my pack um, for getting up <laughs> mountains. And then head torches, which I haven't got at the moment, but I've just got the Petzl Neo Plus, um, about 700 odd lumens. 
Um, and yeah, really good long battery life. You had control on an app and things like that. It's really good. But yeah, one of my coaching people has that at the moment because she is training for night race. Right, moving on to hats and headwear, that sort of thing. So yeah, a lot of people, well, when we first started, I guess people thought this was just like a bit of throwaway merch for supporting the channel. But these hats that we make here um, are the most, the best running hats in the world. They're completely bespoke for us and yeah, technical fabric, sweat wicking. Just look on the website. We've got hundreds and hundreds of five star reviews on the website for people and all the pictures of people get out there getting it done in these hats. Um, yeah, there's just an absolute love of just creating the best possible product we can for a reasonably affordable price. We like to sort of deliver that sort of value. Um, yeah, so yeah, the stealth sort of matte black, the getting it done in the London red, beautiful mesh uh, back design um, in those. The original, the OG, the Just Run hat in the blue. And then, uh, yeah, if you've got sort of a, a slightly larger sort of head, those are good. Slightly sort of smaller head, then we make uh, the Ben Parks hat in the pink and the green as well. Yeah, super comfortable. I wear these all day long and they just perform so well um, in, in competition and everything. So if you've never run with a hat, you want to try something new, these really are the best in the business. Of course, I'm a little bit biased, but yeah, really super proud. It's one of the most proudest moments of my life creating these products. So yeah, check them out and let me know what you think. Well guys, moving on to some nutrition sort of things. So gels, pretty much always just using the Morton gels. They just taste not, not a lot, which is quite nice. They go down well and just the performance you get out of those I think is just fantastic. Uh, sometimes on the trails and things, just use the Goo Roctane gels just as something to mix it up a little bit, just taste a little bit more when you're out there for a little bit longer. So yeah, they're the gels. In terms of recovery shakes, just Sis, Science and Sport, Rego. Um, that just works well for me. Usually tend just to make, try and make a proper shake uh, just with some more sort of natural ingredients, some fruit and veg and that sort of thing. But yeah, if I'm in a hurry, Sis Rego. Supplements and things, I've just got a Science and Sport, multivitamin, it's just basically like an insurance policy. Just, um, yeah, we try and have as much fresh fruit and veg in our diet, but that just helps out if we're just not quite hitting those. Um, yeah, yeah, then just some calcium, magnesium and vitamin D. Uh, supplement there just because I broke my bone and it's just helped uh, with all the healing and that sort of stuff. They have got some vitamin D tablets and we're not taking those at the moment because it's the middle of summer here in the UK but I would take those in the winter and then just a vitamin B12 supplement as well. I don't know why this is here, sun cream. <laughs> Well guys, moving on to cross training. So most of my cross training I do is on this, which is called a Watt Bike Atom, and that's paired up with an iPad and uh, linked to Zwift as well, or the Watt Bike app, but I mainly just use uh, Zwift. Yeah, again, it's a bit of a luxury bit of kit to have. I did buy this secondhand off Facebook Marketplace, uh, but yeah, great bit of kit, just fantastic thing. Very, very lucky to have this in the flat. In terms of other sort of cross training, so much of the strength work I do is just with like these type of um, bands and putting them around my legs and like clams and uh, monster walks and things like that. Just a lot of sort of weight, body weight type uh, strength work. I've just got these things attached to sofas and things around the flat. The gym hasn't been open for so long and I'd normally, well, I don't go there that much, but um, it's always that thing of should I start buying some weights or should I wait for the gym to reopen? So we might be buying some weights and things for the flat soon. Um, and then yeah, I've got the Bosu as well, um, which is like a balance ball thing, I guess. Uh, but yeah, for standing on that, and that's really helped me with building up my strength for my ankle. Well guys, moving on to books. So here is the bookshelf. Uh, there's too much stuff on here to really go through in one go. Uh, but yeah, just made a little selection of some uh, key ones that I think are really good to read. Uh, so yeah, Born to Run, Chris McDougall. I can't go into detail, these would take too long. Um, Rich Roll, Finding Ultra, Charlie Spedding, Last to First. How Bad Do You Want It? Really great book on mindset. Um, 
Ed Two Hours, Ed Caesar's book. Um, yeah, this was wrote a while ago before Kipchoge actually ran the two hour marathon. But yeah, Ed Caesar has been followed all of those um, breaking two projects. So yeah, fantastic book to read in terms, just in terms of the whole background to that sort of thing. Uh, John McAvoy, um, who was a career criminal, spent time in some of the toughest jails in the UK turned his life around out and yeah this is a really good life story of him great podcast to listen to as well if you can find these on rich roll podcast really good for that and then two sort of key uh sort of bits about running daniel's running former daniel's running formula jack daniels and advanced marathon fitzinger and douglas um yeah everybody should have those in their collection and yeah i'll put links to all of this on a blog post and links to amazon or whatever if you want to check out some of the other books in the collection Hi right guys, moving on to some like miscellaneous things. I'm not really sure where these come in. So sunglasses, most of my sunglasses, well, pretty much all of them come from Goodar. I don't really like the whole disposable nature of it, but they are very, very cheap and sunglasses just kind of get a bit battered and scratched, especially when you're out on the trails and you drop them. Um, so yeah, they're about 25 pounds here in the UK. Um, yeah, nice lenses, polarized lenses, super lightweight. Don't even realize you're sort of wearing them half the time. We've got a slightly nicer pair of Oakley frog skins, which I do run in, but they're a little bit heavier, uh, but they do look super cool anyway. So yeah, that's sunglasses. Body Glide anti-chafe gel. Don't go anywhere without this traveling around the world. So whether that's like like under, like where your arms rub together, between your legs, that sort of thing, cover it in this sort of stuff. I don't really use it day to day, but if I'm going on a long run, you just can't risk that sort of chafing. Um, then yeah, Body Glide anti-chafe balm. Um, plasters, just from an Astaplast. Uh, really are going very deep on this, aren't we? Um, yeah, if I get sort of like on your nipples and things as a guy, that sort of thing, just to put those in there. Again, don't do that day to day, but in races, don't want any sort of bleeding. Um, and washing clothes, Halo Sports Wash. This is an absolute lifesaver in our lives. Um, yeah, use that, gets all the gunk and smell out of our stuff that just regular shampoo, shampoo, fabric wash or whatever just doesn't do. So yeah, really good, get that in Sainsbury's. Right guys, so moving on to apps and podcasts and stuff on the phone. So yeah, do a lot of nice, easy, relaxed running. Like to listen to lots of cool stuff. So what am I listening to? That Peter Crouch podcast, Inside Running podcast, my favorite podcast. That is that is number one. Every Monday is, isn't the same without that. Um, Marathon Marketers at Running Life, really recommended. Uh, the Morning Shake Out, Mario Ferroli. Um, Rich Roll podcast, um, This American Life. Sometimes we out late at night. Sometimes those stories can be really sort of cool on there. Billy Yang podcast, running commentary, uh, free economics. Don't tell me the score. Really enjoy that. Um, yeah, marathon talk as well. Ginger runner, where the runner. I'm not going to pronounce <laughs> Dada Dan's name because I'll get it wrong. Um, and yeah, stage running. Uh, some of the Strava podcasts. And that's it pretty much. Uh, yeah, kind of go between those. Always love to hear your recommendations for some new podcasts out there as well to add to the library, but that's what I'm listening to. So there we have it guys. That video is a wrap. That is, I think, pretty much everything I'm using in the current rotation as it stands here in July, 2020. So yeah, let me know. What did you think? I'd love to know about all of the gear that you're using out there as well. And yeah, hopefully you've got some good takeaways. As I said earlier, everything should be linked down below in the comments and check out my partner's video that she did all about her running gear as well on the Sarah Place YouTube channel. So that's it. We're off to get back uh, stuck in to some more training for all the exciting things we've got coming up on the channel. Thank you very much for your support. Please like, share, subscribe. And yeah, let us know what's going on new in your world down in the comments. Right, that's it. Check out benparks.com for all the blog posts, support with the hats and all that sort of stuff. Right, that's it. Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you in the next one.